to that. Okay, hello everyone again. This is Dr. David, and I will be handing over to Dr. Harry in a few minutes. I just want to say this. Dr. Harry probably has done more presentations for us than any other person since we've been doing these webinars. And the reason for that is simple. I, as I mentioned earlier on, his presentations are clear, they're concise, and they are extremely valuable. And one of the things he's going to be talking about is arginine. Arginine is, uh, uh, he's going to tell you what that is. But um, This is one of the, the, the breakthroughs in natural health. But here's the problem. <laughs> Most formulations that, come, that arginine comes in are really, really bitter. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've taken it now for three or four years. But I, I mean, the only reason why I've taken it is certainly not because of its taste. It's more because it, it's, it's, it's a benefit for me and obviously for all the people who have taken it, they take it for that same reason. But what a relief, what a breath of fresh air that uh, Dr. Harry has, has, who always tinkers with, with his formulations and he always tries to improve it, he has, has been able to come up with a formulation that can actually be enjoyable to take down. <laughs> I tell you, the first thing I do in the morning is to take my arginine solution from Dr. Harry, and I, and I know the result is, 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 is producing in my life. Uh, obviously, he's going to talk about other aspects of heart health, and without much further ado, I'm going to just hand this over to Dr. Harry. Dr. Harry, thank you again for taking the time to do this and for sharing your wisdom with us. Over to you. Okay. Can you see my screen? I can see your desktop. Okay, good. All right, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about heart disease. It is uh, our nation's number one killer. Uh, hopefully you can see my desktop. I'm going to play a short video and then we'll get started.
Yep, that is that is a major problem. 2,500 Americans will die today from heart disease. In fact, 2,500 Americans die each and every day of heart disease. We're going to learn an awful lot about it tonight, but uh, one of the things we, we're going to learn is that these deaths are completely needless. Um, in fact, this is football season, and, and these college football um, stadiums hold close to 100,000 people. So if we put the amount of deaths in perspective, it would be an entire stadium filled with people. Every one of the people that attend that game on that Saturday um, are, are dead within 30 days. That is astronomical. It's also equivalent to... 9-11 happened in each and every day. You know, 2,300 Americans lost their lives on that tragic day, and our uh, Homeland Security is protecting us, and our government spent a trillion dollars in Homeland Security, but 2,500 Americans die every day, and nothing is even being done about it. On the death certificate, it'll say death by natural causes, but I'm here to tell you that there's nothing natural about dying from a heart attack or a stroke that it can be prevented. Whether you have high risk factors or not, those can be reversed. If you've already suffered a heart attack or stroke, you can live very confident day to day knowing that you won't have another one. And we're going to learn how today. I've written a book. It's called Let's Stop the Number One Killer of Americans Today. And it is truly a natural approach to preventing and reversing heart disease. But in the book, I break down exactly what the problem is. It's not the cholesterol that, you know, conventional medicine will have you believe, but there's actually uh, four other parameters and uh, that actually are indicators for heart disease that they don't talk about because there's no pharmaceutical for those parameters. So they focus on, on cholesterol, but cholesterol is not the enemy. In fact, it is a friend in your body. Fatal heart attacks happen all the time. If we think about it, you know, family, friends, neighbors, people we know um, die, and, and yet I don't hear about your family, friends, and neighbors. The only time we really hear about it is when somebody famous makes the news. Like in the case of Damian Ash, he was 24 years old, running back for the Denver Broncos, played in a charity basketball game in offseason, not to say that he wasn't physically fit because they work out all year round, and yet he collapsed and died in a charity basketball game. This is uh, John Spencer. Yeah, he played on the Emmy Award-winning show West Wing. He also uh, actually died twice of a heart attack. He died on the show. His character did that he was portraying. And three months in real life, he tragically died of a heart attack. Of course, we know Tim Russert, a beloved journalist for NBC News or ABC. I, I get him confused. But um, he actually did everything his doctor told him to do. He was on a diet. He was on a treadmill every morning. He was taking his cholesterol medicine, his blood pressure medicine, and his diabetes medicine. Yet, none of that could save him. Two weeks prior, he was given a clean bill of health by his doctor, told him to keep up the good work, and two weeks later, while preparing to go on the air, collapsed and died of a massive heart attack, leaving behind his wife and three children. This is Dennis Johnson. The reason I talk about Dennis Johnson, who was the three-time world champion, played with Larry Bird and Boston Celtics, um, is that his age, 52. He was coaching his, uh, his basketball team, his professional basketball team, uh, just a practice session, and he stepped outside uh, between two players. They were walking, walking him to his car, and he, and he collapsed and died. Uh, the player said he was fine one minute, talking, laughing. The next minute he was dead. There was nothing we can do. Now, the reason I talk about it is his age, 52 years old. When I put this talk together, I was 52 years old, and I thought to myself, man, what if that happened to me? What if I died today at 52 of, of a heart attack? What would I miss out on? Well, one of the things I would have missed out on is walking uh, my daughter down the aisle. That's a special moment for a dad to give away his princess, to walk her down the aisle, to have that father-daughter dance um, at the reception. That was a special, special time one I will never forget, and one I will treasure the rest of my life, and yet, had I died at 52, this would not have taken place. 
two months later, or I'm sorry, four months later, I walked my other daughter down the aisle. Now, lucky for me, I ran out of daughters because it gets very expensive <laughs> in this country anyways because the father has to pay for the bride. So, um, but these are special moments in time. I had a lady come up to me at, a, at the end of uh, one of my sessions and said, you know, my husband died at age 52 and my son walked our daughter down the aisle because of that tragedy. And he died of a massive heart attack. And I'm here to tell you that if he would have been uh, on the protocol that I believe in, he would have been walking his daughter down the aisle. And special for me is I became a grandpappy uh, just a month ago, a couple months ago. Um, so now um, I'm going to actually attend this uh, Samuel's uh, graduation from college one day. and. Um, and attend his wedding. I might not dance as good as I do now, but <laughs> I will be there because our bodies are genetically de designed to live 120 years, and I plan on living at least that. Now, heart disease is the number one killer. It accounts for 50% of all deaths in the United States. There's a heart attack every 20 seconds. There's one death every 60 seconds. And over one million heart attacks each year. It kills more than the next nine causes of death, and it's really a global problem. Literally millions of people will die globally from a heart attack. We're all taking time bombs. Um, there's many ways of dying from heart disease. One of them is sudden cardiac death. This accounts for 300,000 deaths every year. And this is where the, the, um, the heart, which has an, a, a rhythm, uh, a beat, and its electrical impulses are, are given out. Um, when it starts to beat irregularly, um, it starves the brain of oxygen, a um, person actually collapses, and in seven minutes you're dead. Um, it's a fibrillation problem. So one-third of the people that die from heart disease every year, the first sign is death. Now the other way is coronary artery disease, and you are given ample warning usually um, in, in that case. Ninety-five percent of these uh, cases die before reaching the hospital, 70% die at home, 100,000 are athletes, so it's not just the couch potatoes, it's actually people that are going to work out. And, and uh, it actually takes the lives of six children every week somewhere in this country. And these would be our basketball players and football players and who don't think they have anything wrong, and then they're out there and maybe a lack of electrolytes or drinking too much diet pop, but it triggers an arrhythmia and they collapse and die. Tragedy. Almost one-third of sudden cardiac arrests outside of homes and hospitals occur in fitness clubs and sports facilities, according to the American Heart Association, where people go to be healthy. And it's not just a man killer. We think of heart disease as a man killer, but one out of every 2.5 women will die of heart disease. If we compare it to breast cancer, as we see here, um, 43,000 women die every year of breast cancer. Compare that to 500,000, over 500,000. In fact, more, men, more women will die than men. So. You can't compare it, and yet no, you don't see uh, uh, marathons. You don't see uh, 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 the football players uh, wearing ribbons or uh, gloves or shoes or baseball players giving away bats and all this for breast cancer, but nothing for heart disease. It's, it's really an American tragedy. And 60% of our youth study was done on 5- to 10-year-olds, and they discovered that 60% of them, 5 to 10 years old, already had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high insulin levels. In fact, we used to think that heart disease began somewhere around, you know, 60, 50, 60 years old, and then 70, you know, uh, it was no good. Well, according to Korean, uh, during the Korean War, they did autopsies on 2,000 uh, soldiers, 18 and 19 years old. Uh, lesions in heart disease found in 77% of those soldiers, 18 and 19 years old. In fact, another study was done in 1993 on 111 young males. 78% were found that heart disease, 30% had vessels that were more than halfway closed. So they had the arteries of a 60-year-old at 18 and 19 years old. Here's some of the signs of heart disease. Uh, this is arteriosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. That's what that looks like. Um, this is a beautiful blood vessel down here. This is one that's about 70% blocked. Um, there are no indications at this point. You feel fine. And then when it gets to about 90%, you start experiencing angina, which is uh, a lack of oxygen to the heart. So the heart begins to cramp up, starts to die. But you get warnings. Don't ignore those warnings. Now, women get different warnings than men. 
They don't get the chest pain oftentimes. They get pain in the back or they get pain in the shoulder so, or, or in the jaw. So be careful. Symptoms are different. Here standard medical treatment uh, is failing and failing miserably. Um, medical treatment is usually drugs or surgery or as I like to say, Drano or Rotorooter because they treat you as if you were a sink, not a human being. And these are failing. The balloon, stents, bypass, they're all failing miserably because we're, heart disease continues to be a number one killer. Now, SHAPE Task Force got together. This was 40 cardiologists. And these 40 cardiologists uh, called themselves SHAPE for Screening for Heart Attack Prevention and Education. They published in the American Journal of Cardiology back in July 2006. Awesome. Let's see what they said. Prevent, we can prevent 90,000 deaths from cardiovascular disease and save $21 billion annually. How? by providing non-invasive screen of all asymptomatic men starting age 45, women starting age 55. So what they're calling for is non-invasive, not uh, catheterization, not a, not a uh, uh, finger prick, no, nothing like that. It's completely non-invasive. Um, asymptomatic means no symptoms. You know, by the, remember, 300,000 Americans, first symptom is death. So we have to start providing non-invasive screening early. In fact, they go on to say we hope to build new momentum in cardiology that inspires physicians to use modern technologies for the prevention, hmm, key word, of a heart attack rather than using expensive technologies only to treat a heart, att heart attack, which is too late and results in benefits too little to benefit patients. What they're saying is by the time they come to us cardiologists, it's too late and there's very little we can do for them and we're bankrupting the system. Now, don't listen to cardiologists. You can listen to Oprah Winfrey. She had a test done. She recommended it to everyone. In fact, even the American Heart Association recommends a cardio screening for everyone over 20. Uh, when Oprah did it, I called to see what it cost. It was $2,000 for that heart scan she had. So that's something that we can't all afford. Of course, she can. But for most of us, $2,000 is an awful lot of money. If you're not having any signs that there's anything wrong, why would you have this test done? But if it costs, say, 30 or 40 or $50, why wouldn't you have it done? Well, that's where the digital pulse wave analyzer comes in. It's an FDA-cleared class two medical device, which means non-invasive. Takes a snapshot of your arteries, tests your heart strength, artery flexibility, artery blockage, hydration levels, and overall cardiovascular health. Best of all, it's quick, affordable, painless, and reliable. Basically, it does seven tests in 60 seconds. Electrocardiogram, echocardiogram, duplex Doppler, pulse oximeter, cardiovascular profile, heart rate variability, augmentation index, and MRI. In a hospital environment, this would cost you somewhere between $2,500 and $5,000. Uh, you get the results immediately, unlike lifeline screening, where uh, you have to wait 14 to 21 days for the results. And if the results aren't good, you have to go to the doctor and have him look it over, uh, which costs you another $75, besides the $140 that you paid for the test. Um, we give you the test immediately. We have trained technicians that can uh, look at the results and tell you exactly what is going on. We grade you from A to G, A being really good, G being a clinical event, okay? A heart attack or stroke waiting to happen. My goal is to get everybody in the green, somewhere between A, B, and C. Oftentimes, if we start out here, but quickly move to here. Now, the best news is we have uh, something that can help out. If you do come out not, not so good, or if you just want to prevent because you have a history, a family history of, of heart disease, and you want to take something for prevention, then um, a new discovery is the first time something in nature has incredible science backing it up. These three men won the Nobel Prize in 1998 on something called nitric oxide gas. It's a gas that comes out of your car exhaust, but for some strange reason, your body manufactures it. In fact, the way they discovered it is they knew nitroglycerin created something in your body and because it is a vasodilator. So this nitroglycerin, um, and the way they discovered it was at dynamite factories. People at dynamite factories who had angina when they were at home, when they went to the dynamite factory to work, it would disappear. That led to the discovery of nitroglycerin as a vasodilator. How funny is it that Alfred Nobel, who actually uh, discovered dynamite, uh, created the Nobel Prize. And how, how, how ironic that years later um, that that the Nobel Prize would be awarded to these three scientists for something that he actually created in nitroglycerin, which is nitric oxide. Now, Alfred Nobel also 
succumbed to heart disease and at age 64 um, died of a massive heart attack. His doctor recommended he take um, uh, nitroglycerin, which he wouldn't do. See the other gentleman in the right-hand corner, one of our presidents, Lyndon B. Johnson, he also had coronary artery disease, much like Alfred Nobel. He chose to take nitroglycerin, and he, in fact, he took it so much that you would see him taking it and placing it under his tongue during the State of the Union address, and uh, he died at age 64 of a massive heart attack. So nitroglycerin is not the cure, but it did lead to the discovery of something that is a cure. Now, nitric oxide does everything everywhere in the body, and that's according to Jonathan Stanley, professor of medicine at Duke University. He says you cannot name one major cellular response or physiological effect in which nitric oxide is not implicated today. It's involved in complex behavioral changes in the brain, airway relaxation, beating of the heart, dilation of blood vessels, regulation of intestinal movement, function of blood cells, the immune system, even the way fingers and arms move, and he is correct in that. You cannot name one physiological function in which nitric oxide does not play a critical role. Now, what causes a decrease in nitric oxide? Well, the older you get, of course, everything goes kaput. Heart disease, diabetes, high cholesterol, uh, high blood pressure, high homocysteine, high C-reactive protein, neurological damage, arthritis, allergies, ulcers, any prescription drugs will lower your nitric oxide levels, alcohol, tobacco use will, trans fatty acids, that's anything that's fried and sickle cell disease. All these things will lower nitric oxide. Now, how do you increase nitric oxide? Well, the bad news is exercise. The good news is you'd have to exercise 24 hours a day, seven days a week to create enough nitric oxide to do any good. Since we can't seem to give it 10 minutes, that's out. Healthy diet. Yep, you can eat all the fruits and vegetables you want. Great antioxidants, but it will not produce one iota of nitric oxide. So it will not help as far as heart disease goes. Now, it will help as far as cancer and some other conditions. But as far as heart disease, nitric oxide is secure and a healthy diet, you can't get it. Now, Dr. Salvador Moncada of England discovered that the endothelium, which is the inner walls of the arteries, veins, and capillaries, uses arginine to make nitric oxide. Hmm, arginine. What is arginine? Well, arginine is an amino amino acid. In fact, it's one of the 22 amino acids that is necessary for life, and it's found in protein, um, found naturally in red meat, uh, fish, and some nuts. The average American gets three grams. If you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you get about two grams a day. Your body's key source of nitrogen, and there's plenty of peer-reviewed publications linking arginine to vascular benefits dating all the way back to 1927. A book was written in 1980 called The Arginine Solution by Dr. Fried and Merrill, and they said in the field of medicine and health, it is one of the revolutions of our time, the discovery that the amino acid arginine may be the magic bullet for the cardiovascular system. In fact, on the cover it says, opens clogged arteries, reduce risk of heart disease, boost potency with natural alternative Viagra, improve your immune system, and more. They refer to it as the miracle molecule. This is John Cook. He wrote the book, The Cardiovascular Cure. He is a uh, doctor, uh, a vascular surgeon, a heart surgeon, cardiologist. Uh, he actually uh, is also chief of vascular medicine at Stanford. And in his book, he says, there's magic within all of us that comes in the shape of a molecule known as nitric oxide, a substance so powerful that it can actually protect you from heart attack and stroke. Best of all, your body can make it on its own. Nitric oxide is your body's best defensive against heart disease. The body is capable of healing itself. What you do with this magic is up to you. He also proved that it melts plaque away. This is a, a, a study that was done, and you can see you can see this pink here is plaque on the inside of this artery. And after treated with arginine, you can see it's gone. In his book, he says, as nitric oxide burns off in the blood, it removes plaque with it, so it actually melts away the plaque. Now, he also was the creator of something called heart bar. Now, heart bar was the first medical food for cardiovascular disease. Um, unfortunately, um, he, he actually created his own pharmaceutical company called Cook Pharma, produced this, and then began selling it to doctors, in fact, you know, uh, and pharmacies. Um, the problem was it, it was, uh, was never really a medical food. It's a, it was a dietary supplement 
So he actually was selling it as a medical food, thought he got approval as a medical food, which is different than a dietary supplement. It actually comes under FDA jurisdiction, much like a prescription drug, but you don't need a prescription. So, um, but anyways, it was a great product, and it led to me discovering, I uh, actually was hired by a company that bought his product for $83 million and rights to sell it, and they hired me as, uh, to help to lecture to doctors along with John, uh, Dr. Cook. He had seven patents on that product, uh, the use of arginine in treatment of hypertension and other vascular disorders, the use of arginine in treatment of vascular degenerative diseases like arterial sclerosis and atherosclerosis, use of arginine for inhibiting lesion formation after vascular injury, including in inhibiting restenosis, Use of arginine specifically in the body of a stent to inhibit restenosis. Use of arginine as dietary supplement improving vascular function. And use of arginine enhance aerobic exercise performance. You don't get his patent very easy, and yet he got seven patents on uh, that heart bar. Now, medically published clinical studies. Uh, remember, going back all the way to 1927, uh, nitric oxide has been studied. But there's over 96,000 studies to date that show that it lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol triglycerides, it improves diabetes, it improves sexual function in men and women, reduces blood clots and strokes, improves congestive heart failure, wound healing, kidney and liver function, improves your memory, long-term and short-term cognitive functions, increases growth hormone, and it also improves muscle growth and performance. This is evidence that demands a verdict on all of our parts. Here's just one of those studies. It's a study done on stable angina, and um, this is uh, people who live with heart disease or live with chest pain every day. Uh, they, you know, unstable is a heart attack, but these are stable, so they have problems, but they might live six, seven years with this, um, so they decided to do a study. Standard medical treatment, three months of drugs, you can see there was below normal. Here is intensified medical treatment, three months after a bypass, and we've got a little bit of improvement here. But if you look at arginine, the use of arginine, okay, two weeks in the use of arginine, look at the difference in vitality, physical functioning, role of physical, and pain reduction. I mean, you cannot look at that and say, why in the world are they still using drugs and surgery when arginine gets results so quickly? Well, it's all about money. Arginine and diabetes, 8% of Americans or 24 million are diabetic and another 57 million are pre-diabetic. Of course, our sugar consumption has risen off the charts, so it's our obesity levels. End-stage results for diabetes is a heart attack, a stroke, blindness, kidney failure, or an amputation, which is not a pretty thing. A small cut on the foot, lesion, uh, you know, doesn't heal because of poor circulation. That leads to an infection, which leads to gangrene, which leads to amputation. This is Dr. Joseph Pendergrass, I worked with him for uh, a few years, and um, he will tell you that um, he met John Cook at a cocktail party, Dr. Cook, and started taking his heart bar and start giving it to his patients. And what he discovered is he started getting results. In fact, he went back through his records, and in 10 years of using arginine in his practice as an endocrinologist on his diabetic patients, he discovered that uh, he no longer was sending 240 patients a year to see three cardiologists in this area. In fact, in a 10-year period, he only sent one patient. So he will tell you that it actually reverses diabetes, type 2 diabetes. Answer, it is the answer to the sexual revolution. Uh, Time Magazine came out with an entire um, issue called How Your Love Life Keeps You Healthy, Making Love Can Boost the Heart, relief paying help and help keep you healthy. 80% of sexual dysfunction is directly attributable to nitric oxide failure. Scientists proved definitively that nitric oxide translates to sexual potency and arginine can improve a woman's sexual desire and overall satisfaction according to a Stanford study. We also know this um, interesting fact. Black Americans are five times more likely to suffer from cardiovascular disease. He had a study was done at Ohio State University and published in circulation to show how that ha is possible. What they did was they separated uh, black Americans, white Americans, two different rooms, ran all the same studies, and they discovered the cardiovascular system of the black subjects have more enzymes to produce nitric oxide and it can be more efficient than those of white subjects. Hmm, what the heck is going on? I thought nitric oxide is a cure. 
Well, the black subjects did not produce enough of what? Amino acid arginine to complete the process of nitric oxide production. So even though their body is, is more efficient and can produce more, because they weren't producing arginine, they didn't complete the process of nitric oxide production and instead produced an, uh, another oxidative molecule, a superoxide, uh, which reacts with nitric oxide to create even more powerful and damaging oxidant known as peroxynitrate, which leads to cardiovascular disease and cancer by five times. What is amazing is their system has great potential to produce nitric oxide and can be corrected very efficiently at a relatively early age. If children were to start out now taking arginine and producing nitric oxide, no matter what their color, they would be able to uh, especially African Americans, be able to prevent heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, amputations, strokes, all the things that um, have been plaguing them all these years. So the answer is simple. Early detection saves lives using arginine to improve circulation and you will have no more heart disease. Now how much arginine do you need? Dr. Lignar won the Nobel Prize. He also wrote the book No More Heart Disease, How Nitric Oxide can prevent or reverse heart disease and strokes. And in his book, he recommends five grams a day. He says, anything less, you're wasting your time and money. Well, five grams at a health food store would be about 58 pills. Cost you about $110. And you can see these are really big pills, not something you're going to want to take one or two, let alone 58. However, you can also get it in a liquid or powder form. Um, I have created a product called Cardio for Life. I've worked with Arginine now 12 years, have formulated a lot of different products for a lot of different companies. A lot of those companies are still selling my products. And um, this is my own private label that I'm really proud of. Uh, one of the reasons is because it tastes so good. We have it in three flavors, grape, peach, and orange, but it just tastes marvelous. And we put the 5,000 milligrams that Dr. Lee now recommends. We also put in 200 milligrams of citrulline, which he also recommends. If you go to my website, myheartcure.com, uh, which we were on when watching that video, um, there are seven videos, uh, interviews with Dr. Lee Ignaro, and he explains the importance of arginine and citrulline combinations. Citrulline it actually stabilizes the arginine. We also put in 2,500 IUs of vitamin D3. I'm a big believer in vitamin D3. I think every American should take at least 5,000 I use every day, so I actually do a double scoop of this every day, so I'm getting 10,000, and I take another 10,000 outside of that. But vitamin D is great for not only heart disease and strokes and blood pressure, but also cancer, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, you name it, and uh, vitamin D uh, is actually really good, osteoporosis. Uh, we put in 500 milligrams of omega-3. Omega-3 uh, counteracts the effect of the uh, C-reactive protein, which is a, a, a marker for heart disease besides the homocysteine and cholesterol that the arginine and citrulline are taking care of. The omega-3 takes care of the C-reactive protein. Uh, we put it in a, a perilla oil. Uh, perilla oil actually uh, converts over to the DHA and EPA and uh, is a lot easier on your digestive tract. Uh, so if you're taking this twice a day, you're going to get 1,000 milligrams, and that's beautiful. It's not only good for, for preventing heart disease and strokes, but also it's an anti-inflammatory. helps with pain, helps with uh, the brain to function, and long-term and short-term memory. We also put in 100 milligrams of coenzyme Q10. I'm sure many of you on this call are very familiar with coenzyme Q10, but every cell in your body has a mitochondria. In fact, uh, the cells in your heart have several mitochondria per cell, and uh, it's a furnace, and that furnace needs fuel like any, any furnace, and that fuel is actually CoQ10, which your liver produces. Unfortunately, the older you get, the less is produced. So we give you 100 milligrams of coenzyme Q10, 50 milligrams of 100% resveratrol. Resveratrol, a lot of studies are being done as far as being uh, called the uh, fountain of youth because it actually reverses the aging process but also helps with heart disease, strokes, and so on. In fact, um, it's the pigment of the red uh, grape. Um, people in uh, the Mediterranean uh, don't have a lot of heart disease and they eat a lot more fat than we do and it's because they drink a lot of red wine. Well, this is equivalent to drinking 36 glasses of wine with one serving. Also a powerful B complex, your, you know, all your B vitamins plus 
the key B vitamins, which are B6, um, B12, and folic acid, and those are to counteract homocysteine, the only known uh, substances to counteract homocysteine, which actually turns your arteries into rusty pipes, so cholesterol has something to stick onto. If you, if you had no homocysteine, your cholesterol could be 600. It'll just flow freely through your body and out. 100 micrograms of selenium. Selenium, a lot of studies have been done, in, uh, done on this. Uh, our soil is, is depleted of selenium. Selenium can prevent a lot of things, including heart disease, strokes, but also cancer. 60 milligrams of OPCs, that's your oligomeric paranthocyanidins, uh, your grape seed extract, and your pycnogenols. And um, these are great antioxidants. Anytime you take arginine, you need to take antioxidants because when uh, that arginine converts to nitric oxide, even though it is, has a healing effect, when it burns off as a gas, it actually creates uh, free radical damage. So you need to take an antioxidant. A lot of studies have been done with arginine that were counterproductive because they weren't using an antioxidant. You have to have an antioxidant and your uh, 60 milligrams of the OPCs, uh, these are, OPCs are actually 50 times more powerful than vitamin E and 20 times more powerful than vitamin C, which are great antioxidants. Uh, we also sweeten it with stevia and FOS, fructooligosaccharide, which is also a prebiotic. And we have 50 milligrams of estrogen. Now what is estrogen? Estrogen actually increases amino acid absorption by 62%. It increases vitamin absorption by 50%. Glucose absorption, 57%. ATP production, 18%. Decreases your blood sugar levels by 19%. Increases insulin sensitivity, 38%. By adding that one ingredient, we separated ourselves from any other arginine product on the market today. So this is a powerful ingredient. It's actually a combination of astrologus and Panax ginseng that a laboratory out in California, scientist has clinical studies backing up each of these claims. So all in all, if you were to add all these things up at a health food store, it would run you somewhere around $317 for all these ingredients, yet it sells for under $40. Arginine is safe to take with your cholesterol-lowering drugs, your aspirin anticoagulants, your calcium channel blockers, your digital digitalisase inhibitors, beta blockers, diuretics, antiarrhythmics, antidepressants, do not take with nitroglycerin. Uh, both of them are producing nitric oxide. Both of them will lower your blood pressure. Um, always check with your doctor before making any changes. Can't just cold turkey your meds. Now, I have to warn you and tell you the side effects. Um, you know, it's, you, you swore, any doctor is sworn to tell the patient the side effects. They don't tell you usually because, you know, they don't, they're afraid you won't take the medication if you knew the side effects. Well, I can't sleep at night unless I, I, I tell you these side effects. So here we go. You could expect an increased energy, improved memory, increased immune system, improved sleep, increased muscle toning, loss of weight, decrease in pain, better athletic performance, quicker movement, increased sexual function, and less prescription medicine. I know these are terrible side effects, but I think it's worth the cost. The bottom line, people, it's your health, it's your choice. You know what? Don't, leave, don't be lazy. Uh, we have the information highway. Um, you can Google anything. Uh, go to PubMed. Go to Medline. And you can find out anything about anything in health. Um, you need to become your own doctor. You know, the first annotation for doctor in the, in, the, in the, I almost said Bible, but I mean in the dictionary is actually teacher. Not healer, but teacher. So, you know what? You, you can be your best teacher. You can be your own doctor. Just learn as much as you can. Always get a second, third opinion. It is your choice, not chance, that will determine your wellness and your destiny. Remember, you're genetically designed to live 120 years, not 60, 70 years, okay? So don't cut yourself short. You know what? Give yourself every opportunity to live that long and enjoy life. And, and not, not just, you know, in a nursing home drinking your meals through a straw, but I'm seriously, you know, right up to your 120th birthday, you should be dancing and smiling and having a good time. Now, for contact information, you can call me. You can email me. For more information, you can go to my website, myheartcure.com. And if you want to order the product, go to mycardioforlife.com forward slash webinar. Um, and if you do that, you will, I'll send you a free report on 22 reasons why you need to take arginine. It goes beyond heart disease and stroke and blood pressure and diabetes and sexual dysfunction. It actually includes things like osteoporosis 
and asthma and allergies and hemorrhoids and macular degeneration and I can go on and on and on. 22 reasons to take arginine report free if you order product using this right here, mycardioforlife.com forward slash webinar. And with that, I'm going to turn it over back to, you can take control, and I will answer any questions in the next 15 minutes. Hello there. Thank you so much, Doc. Excellent presentation again, as always. Um, folks, if you have any questions, please type in your questions, like we said, into the chat box to your right, and I'll be sure to answer the questions. Um, like I said initially, uh, this uh, one of the things that, that, that we really like, uh, Sherry and I, I, can, I think I can say that with Sherry as well, is that uh, the, the content that is provided here on this, on, this, on this particular webinar by Dr. Harry is something that you can understand and that you can apply right off the bat and that you can monitor. And I think that's huge. For people to actually see the progress and see whether things are working, I think that's very, very important for you to be able to do that and obviously share with your people. All right, question, how does this impact hormones, Dr. Harry? How does it impact what? Um, hormones. Oh, hormones. Hormones. Well, the vitamin, vitamin D3 that you're getting in the product is an actual hormone. It's not a vitamin and actually it improves uh, the production of hormones. So it helps to balance uh, your hormones. Great, so vitamin D helps to, okay, that's, that's good to know. Vitamin D, it does that. And vitamin D, by the way, is like you said, is, 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 is more a hormone than it is a vitamin. Right. Right. Okay. Still, wait, still waiting for questions here. And by the way, folks, if you've gone to our website, there's a whole nutrition series that uh, we've put together. And one of, one of them, one presentation in the series is by Dr. Elizabeth um, Owings. And she also talked about cardiovascular health. And she mentioned, um, she goes in, into detail about arginine and CoQ10 and how these all work together. So if you want more information about that, too, uh, I mean, she's, she, she talks generically just about arginine. But, again, this is, this is it's, when it comes to taste, I tell you, I just can't believe that. It's, it's even possible for something that good to taste, to taste this good because I'm used to, ta to, to good stuff tasting really, really bad. All right, please repeat the name of the arginine book with the author's name. I guess you want to show, show that picture up again, uh, where it had all the, the books on about arginine. All right. I think, folks, the first thing you need to do is to find a place where they do um, the testing, uh, the DPA testing. That, that way you can have a baseline for where you're at, and then you can now map out a, pl a plan. I'm sure Dr. Harry can help you with that as well, a strategy to, to help rebuild your cardio cardiovascular help, health. Excuse me, cardiovascular health. Okay. Where does one get arginine to put into this product? Isn't it a natural food product? I think you mentioned something about that, but go ahead. Yeah, you, you, can, um, you can get the five grams of, of arginine in your diet every day. You only have to eat uh, five porterhouse steaks or seven lobster tails. <laughs> Those are the richest source of arginine and so you really can't get enough in your diet. Um, and arginine at one time, you know, was considered non-essential, that your, your, your body, your liver produced it and all you needed. But um, in today's environment, many of these things that were non-essential are now essential. So, and we can't get it in our food, so you have to supplement in order to increase it. So 
most of the arginine that is imported is actually imported from um, from Japan. Uh, there's different types of arginine. Um, most companies use something called arginine hydrochloride. Um, it's a cheaper version, and it's not 100% arginine. It's only 73% arginine. Uh, my product, we use the freeform arginine, which is 100% pure arginine and highly absorbable. So, um, but yeah, it's imported from Japan. It is actually a derivative uh, taken from um, gene non-genetically modified uh, soy. So that's where we get it. But it's not soy. People panic and say, oh, it's soy. It's not soy. You're just extracting the arginine from the soy. Hmm. Like, yeah. if, if I extract arginine from a steak, um, you're not getting the steak. <laughs> you're right. All the fat and, and everything else. You're just getting arginine from the steak. Right. That makes sense. Okay. I hope that question is answered uh, to your satisfaction. Uh, if not, let us know. Does cardio for life increase production of all hormones? Hmm. No. No, it's not going to increase production of hormones. It helps to balance hormones, not increase production. In other words, if, if you're low on certain hormones, it can help to bring it back up, and if you're high on others, it will bring, it, bring those back lo lower? It depends on how far away you are from being balanced. So. If somebody is low in testosterone or they're low in estrogen or they're too high in estrogen, it, if it's pretty close, it will help to balance it. If, it's, if you're taking um, you know, uh, bioidentical hormones or something, you're going to continue to take that. You might be able to taper off and not take as much. Same thing with thyroid medicine. Uh, you, sh you should be able to take less. Right. Okay, uh, where can we find DPA testers? Do you want to you want to give them a general overview, or do, should, should they call you? No, they can go to the website. Um, hang on, let me and show. Let me go here. If you go to this website, My Heart Cure, and you click on the DPA test section, and then you click on find a technician near you, click on that button, it'll list uh, technicians in your area by state. So you can just, you know, go through the list and, and find someone and then give them a call. Okay. And this is on your website, right? And this is on your website. That's right? all on the website, right. Okay, great. great. Now, Doc, is, are, are there any, like, general guidelines? Um, if I'm 60, for instance, do I need to take any more than a scoop as opposed to if I'm 20? Um, yeah, the older you are, mm -hmm. you know, the more you're going to want to take. You want to take at least twice a day, first thing in the morning, last thing at night. Um, also, if you're on any medication, you're going to want to take at least twice a day, um, and hopefully in time you'll be able to get off a lot of those medications. Um, I mean, if you're in perfect health and you're young and you work out and your, you know, your uh, your BMI um, body mass index is perfect, and you you can get by with once once a day. Um, like I said, I do um, actually uh, a double scoop, which is two servings twice a day. Okay. And I don't. I haven't. I haven't been to a doctor in 20 years, so I have. Don't take any medications whatsoever. Oh wow, that says a lot. Okay, uh, now you, you did mention. Most, um, I know I've asked you about CoQ10 as well. Can you want you want to talk about uh, CoQ10? What's the question concerning CoQ10? Um, cardio for life. It, it does have some CoQ10 in it, right? It has 100 milligrams of CoQ10 per serving. Per serving, okay, and that and what is recommended is like uh, 100 milligrams a day. 100 milligrams is fine. If somebody had was suffering from heart disease, they would need about 300 milligrams. So, uh, is it, but if they are suffering from heart disease, they should be doing three servings a day, which would give them the 300 milligrams. Okay, so it's safe to to go three, four, four times oh, a day. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. 
Okay, great, great. Okay, that excellent. By body weight, if you're, you know, over 250 pounds, you're going to want to do a double scoop, not a single scoop. Scoop. Okay. Okay. So weight does matter. And now how about we black people? Do we need to double up on ours as well? Well, it depends on your family history and, and um, you know, if you have high blood pressure or diabetes or um, any other complications. Got it. Got it. Okay, well, thank you again for an excellent presentation. And, uh, folks, I, encourage you to, I strongly encourage you to, to, to make this part, a part of your nutritional program. I guarantee you, I mean, I hardly ever give guarantees, but this is one thing that I think everybody should have, which is one of the reasons why we have Dr. Harry on so many times. All right. Well, Dr. Harry, anything you want, any final words? No. Um, I'm always available. Well, we appreciate that. We really do. All right. We're going to wrap it up for tonight. Folks, join us for tomorrow's presentation on reflexology with uh, Patricia. It's going to be good. All right. God bless. Have a good night.